Yo, what's up everyone? This is Cavell. I am here to help you become a better Fortnite player. So, first thing I'm going to talk about is warming up in creative. Yes, something a lot of you don't do and complain about how they're not getting better and why they're sucking it, you know. And I'm here to tell you that... You need to warm up in creative. Come on. Epic add in here. Abuse it. Use it. Use it to your advantage. Right? I remember when I first started playing in season three, I wasn't able to warm up in uh creative, right? I had to warm I had to warm up by you know, going into a game, spending countless games to, you know, quote unquote warm up and you know, and go land at Moisty Mire or, you know, Willy Woods, chop some woods, you know, chop some trees and and then build and learn my edits there. But you don't have to do that now. You have creative. You don't have to worry about your KD and stuff like that if you're like me. But anyways, in creative, first thing I do to warm up is I do some wall ramp force, right? Because this is how I'm pushing people. So I'm doing this, right? Just get those easy keystrokes in, right? Maybe change the direction. Alright. Maybe do double. Alright. So that's what I'm doing in creative, right? And this is only what I do this maybe once or twice. Three times maybe most. This is something that comes second nature to me, right? So I'm doing this, right? Floor ramp wall, floor ramp wall, or I might do the double one, like right there. Afterwards, I uh, I do 90s. So the 90s I usually do are, you know, ramp, wall, 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 floor ramp, rinse and repeat. I usually do this a few times, I'd say. And then I also do editing down. So when it comes to edits, I realized I was never a quick editor, but I have. Be I am becoming a bit faster and quicker with it um, by taking my time. You know? I think it's better to do the edit right than to do it too fast and fumble and not do it at all. So take your time initially, and then when you get better, you can do it quicker, right? But the key thing is doing it right. And if you haven't done so already, you should definitely set your uh, reset edit to scroll wheel because that is very, very beneficial. Something that's game changing and kind of crazy if you think about it but yeah so I practice my edits you know at a window reset you know these are this is when I shoot reset they hit and they break the wall and I shoot again so that's something you want to practice right so editing editing building ramps up building 90s you know these aren't anything too fancy right when it comes to build battling but uh, that's one thing you want to warm up in creative. Okay, Th those three things are here. All right. Well, including that too, the double ramp wall floor. So that's what I do in creative, right? Another thing I do is you want to practice uh, shooting and building. So what do I mean by that? So, you know, in, in Fortnite, we have this shotgun meta where sh shotguns are crazy powerful. And a lot of fights are up close, at least in my experience. So you want to practice shooting and then building. So, for instance, you do something like this. Right? Do it again. Right? This is a bit sloppy, but you get the gist, right? You're defending yourself after you shoot, so you're not taking fights 50-50. Another good one is when someone's pushing you, they're below you, shoot, floor, shoot, floor, 
the floor. That's something you want to do. Practice that. You know, if you're not going to be a crazy builder, at least do that to minimize the amount of damage you take while you fight other players. Alright, so. Right. So that's how I'm usually doing it. And then usually if I get a good pump in, I'll usually just spray them down. You know, m majority of the time that works, but if you feel like you're taking a risk because you're either low HP and whatnot, then you should always shoot and then build. A good habit is to always just do it just because you never know if someone's going to get lucky with their shots and just beam you for, you know, over 100 with a shotgun from low ground. So that's something you want to take into consideration. Another thing I want to talk about is uh, changing your sensitivity. So... When it comes to sensitivity, I think a lot of people can't hit their shots because they're either shooting too slow or they're shooting too fast, meaning they just can't track the target, right? So everyone that I tell to change the sensitivity when they can't hit their shots, it's helped drastically. You know, I played CS back in the day and like some Overwatch as well. And I realized having a low sensitivity is always going to help, right? So rule of thumb for me is my sensitivity is high enough such that see i'm a wrist player so that when i go from one side of uh my left side of the rift wrist and then i turn all the way to the right i do at least 180 so here this is 180 all right so if i'm standing this this is 180 this is as at least 180 right so meaning if you're a wrist player like me, for me, you know, if I'm this is uh this is all the way to my left, right? With my wrist, and then if I turn all the way to my right, it should be one eighty. Or at least one eighty. So that's how high your sensitivity should be, because I don't think you need to do anything more than hundred and eighty degrees because it'll just be more efficient to just turn the other way. And unless you're trying to do three sixties then I'm you know, moving my whole arm. But in general, you know, you wanna be able to track. So when I was talking about tracking so if I want to track this wooden vertical piece here on my wall, I should be able to go left and right with the A and D key and be able to stick onto that wooden piece, right? For the most part, right? See, if you can't do that, that means your your sense is probably too high because you can't track a target, right? So that's that's how you should be working on your sensitivity. So if we take a look, my sensitivity is at 0 0.040. Pretty low, I'd say, for the X and Y axis. Pretty low. So, and if it helps, you know, um, change your ADS sensitivity, which is mouse targeting sensitivity. I leave it on default. Um, or let's see, is it mouse scope? It's one of these two, but Regardless, I think lowering your sensitivity if you feel like you can't hear your shots is definitely going to help a little bit, you know? Adjust it to however you feel. And if you see improvements, then maybe that's good enough, you know? But if you feel like if you're an arm player, and then you can probably have a higher sensitivity or a lower sensitivity because you can swing your whole arm to compensate my wrist movement, you know, this limited movement and how far left and right my wrist can go. So that's when it comes to sensitivity, all right? And now, the next thing I want to talk about is learning the dynamics, or the power dynamic of a build fight, all right? So you're probably going to ask me, what the fuck does that mean, right? So when it comes to dynamic, the power dynamic of a build fight, it just means who is the aggressor. When you're pushing up on someone, are they contesting you? Are they above you? Are they playing super aggro are they spraying you down etc right and if that's the case and you feel like you lost high ground and they lit you up what do you do you don't keep on chasing up and trying to retake this high ground because if you're an even player with the other person meaning like equally in skill even skill level it's not hard for someone to stay on high ground because this is what they do this is what they do and you're never going to catch up to them and each time you're going to try catching up to them they're just going to shoot you, right? They're going to ADS 
on your body with a shotgun while you're going up while you're doubling while you're uh doubling up ramp that they're gonna shoot you from there etc but you're, you're leaving yourself very exposed so when i'm talking about power dynamic dynamic of a fight is when you know they're the aggressor make them come to you build in a one by one right they try to break the wall, shoot, right? If they're breaking down your floor, breaking down your wall right here, right? Edit out, take, oh, not like that. Take a shot, reset. You know, this is something I learned from watching a lot of Cypher PK videos. Shout out to Cypher because he's a nasty player, but, you know, what I realize is, you know, he doesn't always have to take high ground. If he has high ground, then cool, he can play the aggressor and win the fight. But what I realized is, He's very smart in his one by one plays. Meaning, at the end of the day, what I want to do is shoot you in the head and kill you before you kill, before you can even touch me or kill me, right? So, with that principle in mind, just understand if they're always playing aggro, they're going to chase you. It doesn't matter how high they go up, they're going to come back down and try to kill you. And in that regards, just want to fuck with them in the wall, in the one by one, you know? You know, if they're, ax they're trying to ax it down, you know, edit, shoot, reset. Shoot, edit, right? Shoot, edit, right? So that's something of what I describe as power dynamic of a bill fight. Understanding who's the aggressor and who's going to be the one that's being chased, right? Because, you know, one thing about Fortnite is turbo bill is so damn strong that if you're behind a ramp and a wall... There's no way they can kill you unless they grab that wall perfectly or they have some kind of dynamite or stink bomb, some kind of utility to help them get you out of one by one. But if neither of you have it, it's 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 a pretty much even matchup. And I'd say uh, the person in the one by one has a better chance of killing the guy outside because the guy is always trying to come in and he's always going to try to axe your wall to get the, the wall. And in the meantime, you can always edit and shoot them. And majority of the time, I always get that shot off before they do. So that's that's what I want to talk about. Power dynamics of a fight. So that's it. That's the, Those are the few things that I wanted to just talk about in order to become a better Fortnite player. Uh, if you guys have any suggestions or any types of video you guys want me to do, I will do them. But, you know... But just to generalize, what we talked about today is warm makeup in uh, creative before you play in Fortnite. Maybe 10-15 minutes at most, I would say. Anything more than that is going to be redundant. Um, changing your sensitivity, lowering it. And then when it comes to fighting, always shoot, build, shoot, build. That's one thing. And then the last thing I talked about was power dynamics of a fight where whoever is the aggressor is going to be chased. Or whoever is the aggressor is going to be the chaser. And the one that's playing a little bit more passive, if it's you, you should just one by one up and make them come to you and try to outplay them like that. Alright, so that's it for today. I'll see you guys later. Peace out.